assuming we have no petitions. So we'll move right into board management. So uh, if you look on the second page, as on the bottom, longitudinal data for the entire school. Um, Jason, is there anything you want to share about this, uh, either projections or uh, what, what, you're, what we're seeing here? Um, what I did was I took some highlights from the packet that I Perfect. did, um, I think over the summer, I said this, um, and just thought I'd go through, through some quick notes of these. And then if there are questions, obviously, please ask. Um, so, let's see. And I'll back up. We, as a staff, um, went through um, the data took us, because we only had like half an answer each day, so it took us a few staff meetings, but we went through this as well. So, um, so as far as communication and our professional development plan for this calendar year, um, I hope you all still get my school messenger emails on the weekends. So pretty proud of that, that's working. And then our PD focus for the year, um, on September 3rd, and I'll, I'll get to this in another slide, we had a PD focus on career tree development with an author and speaker named Mark Perna. Um, so you should really check him out. He's really exciting to listen to, and the staff had great feedback. Um, on November 18th, um, we're going to be trained in youth mental health first aid through the Clara Martin Center. So that continues our kind of year-long piece on understanding students with trauma. And then Perkins 5 is new this year as of July 1st, so there's lots of training that we're going to have to go through as a staff as well to understand what the requirements are. So that's kind of our PD piece for the year. Um, so Mark Perna came um, September 3rd um, in his book, Answering Why. He's the founder of TFS Consulting. So he's going to work with us on developing these career trees for all of our programs. And they're based in, um, if you can picture a tree, and I'll show you a picture in a second, uh, a root system that's based on academics, experiences, and technical skills um, and then from that the body of the tree becomes like the foundation of their program knowledge and then the branches break out into three different levels um, here here and here and so we'll fill in all this information um, and this would be a foundational program but each level is where a student can go sorry after they complete like our program so this might be the job opportunities available and the salaries they might make after this first This world opens up to students. And if they go to the top, maybe that could be a BA or a master's or a PhD, this world opens up to students. So this would be by each by each program. Okay. Okay. This is CPM, but on this side of them. Yeah, okay. So Paul, my neighbor. Hey there, Linda. So we're I'm, I'm really excited um, to joke around the building like I've turned the cooling on this. And, uh, <laughs> I have, I really have. Um, I read his book over the summer. We're following each other on Twitter. I have extra copies in my office if anyone wants one. Um, they're not all signed. I'm sorry. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and from this work, so this becomes, um, we're just getting access to his online learning management system. And then teachers and us will enter in this data, which we already have just in different formats. It's going to give us a really concise and clear message to recruit from. Because then we're going to get these these trees, a picture like a little different, but a little fancier, of this tree, which is like a six by five giant tree that we're going to get to post in the school and all the programs, as well as some of the other PDFs that we can then send to these sending schools and go talk to students about. Plus, it's a big draw for parents because we're learning how to change our language. And he talks a lot about understanding students and where they are and the difference between the Y and Z generations. And that they're looking for not necessarily I want this career, but I want this lifestyle. And so if we change our vocabulary a little bit, we can tell them how they might be able to get to this lifestyle. That was terrible English, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so he also talked about bridging this awareness gap. And this is not only for students, but for parents too. Um, so we're really talking about how they get to these high demand, high wage jobs. And in 2017, um, the Department of Labor brought out a study about the, the economic kind of opportunities. Have you seen that report um, mm -hmm. in Randolph? And so we, we looked at that as a school on our first assembly as well. Oh. So it, I think it's a great message. We're really excited. I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. um, and so this will be a large portion of our uh, professional development this year. And then he has a definition of what a planning culture is. And I thought, you know, this is what we do. 
this is what we do every day and we keep readjusting. We really want students to leave with a plan when they get, graduate high school. And he talks about, you know, college and career should really just be, is every student college focused? Because you, in order to get a job, you still have to go to college or some kind of training. It shouldn't just one or the other. So I, I find it fascinating. Um, if anyone wants a book, let me know. I'll get you one. Questions so far? I know that's really not part of the data, but I have it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we went over our mission statement, which again, um, and they did this before I got here about five years ago, but this directly relates back to what a planning culture is. So I feel like if we're meeting our longitudinal data, we're also then meeting our, our mission statement as a school. So this is something that we can always go back to as a true test to see if we're working towards our goals. Um, and so how do we know we're meeting the mission statement? These are our main priorities. IRC entertainment, because we know if a student leaves with a certificate, they're more likely to be hired and they're more likely to make a higher wage. Um, CTSO is the Career Technical Student Organization participation that leads to networking and scholarships. Work-based learning participation, student experience leads to more experience than someone else who gets them a higher wage and a competitive edge. We're always um, assessed on academic progress, which we'll get to in one second. Um, math and literacy are still continued this year. Science will probably be next year, and my guess is the Agency of Education will um, use the 11th grade SBAC science assessment as part of our assessment as well, even though we don't necessarily work with those students in grades 9 and 10. Um, and then post-secondary placement, either in college training or enlistment. Um, and so as we continue to use those measurements in our data, that's also how we know we're meeting the mission statement. Good so far. Mm -hmm. um, so work keys, we talked about this in the spring last year. This is one of the ways uh, that we're measured in math and literacy. And so as a reminder, last year we were the only technical center to pilot work keys in the state, which was good for us. We got big kudos mm -hmm. with the Agency of Education <laughs> for that. We're going to do it again this year. We're going to test all new students in October and then all students again in May 2020. And so that'll cost us around $4,000, and we use um, Perkins money for that. But that will give us a true um, level of data. For new students, it'll be October to May and see if there's growth. And then for returning students, it'll be from last year to, to May, May to May, to see if there's growth. Um, scores range from 1 to 7, or 65 to 90. And a 5 enables a student to test out of a CCC, CCV graduation requirement. They require students to take work keys as a graduation, mm. as an assessment, as a graduate. So if a student gets a 5 with us and they go to CCV, they wouldn't have to take that, which is, you know, there's some motivation for a student there. So it's a test that they don't have to pay for out of their own pocket Correct. to get to CCV? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. That's a good question. That is there a fee? I mean, do they still have to not take it, but do they still get assessed a fee for it? I do not know. We wish Kate was here. We'll have to ask her. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good, I'll find that out. Okay. That's Sorry. That's okay. That's a great question. Um, so as a center, right, we scored 4.25 in math, which came out to roughly, as I added everything up, so there might be, you know, a couple points human mm -hmm. error here, 77.5, uh, 4.18 in the um, literacy documents, and 78.5. Now what's interesting about this is the Agency of Education has not come back to us and say, what's proficiency, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. My guess is they're going to say five, uh, right? It seems pretty logical if that's what CC CCB wants. So we're not too far off, um, it, which is good because it gives us some goals and something to work towards this year. If, Did the kids see this as being a meaningful test? Did they work hard to do You, you well know what was great? This? Um, Carlos is a good example. He, and we talked about this for a few months before we did this in May. And one of the things we told the students was, you know, we want you to do well on this because our funds are tied to this. So if you, and Carlos had this conversation, I remember going into his classroom last year, mm -hmm. he brought me in and we were talking about it as a class. And if they want, you know, the bells and whistles and all this equipment, it's directly related because if we get our fives, we have more money to spend on the other stuff and we don't have to spend as much on the math and literacy. And I think once we had this conversation, they seemed to accept it rather than, I would say, the S back, mm -hmm. which they don't always accept. Right. Right. Um, did you think you think they were a little uh, more willing? Absolutely. They were They were engaged and they did the best they could. They stayed the whole hour and a half, whatever it took, and they gave it the best. Right? Mm -hmm. I, and and yeah. the last thing is, yeah, I also talked about 
inheriting tradition, so what you're doing now, you need to get gear for the people that are coming up after you guys also. And they bought into that, and they took it very seriously. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's interesting on, as so this is scores across programs, right? And um, I think it's in here as well. Um, what's interesting is uh, our bias. You know, so if I thought, man, I never would have thought that the auto group would have scored on an average of a 90. Like, mm -hmm. it just never really, you know, knowing who they are, but they bought in. And, and they stuck with that test to do that. And the same thing with the advanced manufacturing. Knowing who they are last year as students, and all of a sudden, they, they did really well. And what we talked also about is, in the literacy documents, the reading got just longer by page. And so we know some students, you could tell on their individual scores, just started kind of like, oh, I gotta read more of this, and just started to tune out. And you can see how much time they spent, mm -hmm. versus others were like, I'm just gonna do this, and, and did pretty well. So it was just fascinating as kind of this pilot to go through and see where students landed. Questions so far? I don't think it's that, it wasn't, it didn't take all day. What's ERM? ERM was our forestry program, Environmental Resource Management. And that's the program we folded this year into the Diversified Ag program. The value of the discussions. Yeah, it's kind of neat because that's the whole purpose behind collecting the data and taking the work. Yeah. And what what's also nice is every student got a report on how they did, and it really explains to the student where they topped out or where mm -hmm. you know if you understood this, this is what. So it's like this personalized report um, that we handed out. It's really helpful. Sort of basic skills in in math and reading. It, you know what's nice is um, mm -hmm. it's like it start it's. One to five, or one to seven, so one is pretty basic, seven gets a little more complicated. I don't think it tops out at pre-calc, probably algebra two. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, the students applied what they have learned, and they take this more as they connect with its assessment. So mm -hmm. a basic one might be, Ann gave Paul $20 change for a $1.50 cup of coffee. How much is change, you know, how much change? Is and so it progressively gets harder. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there aren't that many questions. I want to say 35 questions possibly mm -hmm. in the math. Mm -hmm. And so, but at least the student feels like, oh, I understand that right. versus some, maybe a little more random kind of math right. or literacy concept. Right. Mm -hmm. right, right, but yet there's algebra in there, but it's in a word right. paragraph, right? Exactly. So, so it's interesting. So is this state sort of, or who's asking you to do this? The Agency this of Education. Vermont's the, Agency. Vermont's Agency okay. of Education, that mm -hmm. if we want to use Perkins funds, the state has to show federal agencies Confidence. how we are assessed in okay. math and literacy. And since the 11th grade math and literacy went to 9th grade, right. this is kind of their answer I right see. now. Wasn't this, some of the employers were pushing for this too? Well, or? so there's the math and then there's the literacy assessments and there's one more and it's about um, graphing and if you could read graphs. Mm -hmm. And if you get a certain score on all three, you get like a certificate that you could show to businesses that Just you're say I'm, I'm employable. employable. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know how many businesses in Vermont would take that and really say, yes, you are. I don't, most of them would be like, right. I don't know what this is. <laughs> right. Right. Probably a hundred of them. Yeah, because I remember <laughs> hearing about this probably two or three years ago. Right. And it was, CCB was doing a course or offering a Remember they did that college readiness class? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but it wasn't in the college okay. readiness. It was in it was workforce development. Okay. So, um, but I like this. So how come you're not using the graphing part? Because I'm reluctant to do just for that reason. I'm reluctant to invest in a lot of that other that third wheel, which I feel like is pushing our luck a little bit, right. and for a certificate that won't mean okay. anything to anyone except paying more to ACT. Yeah. But yeah, if that right. takes off and everybody around the state starts using it, I, I'd like to see that first. Change. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, because that was the same, to me, some of the same issue with the career readiness class was that then you got the certificate from the governor that said you're work ready, but none of the industries bought into it. And, and, and so I just feel like I want to see it happen first. 
Um, okay, so Perkins evaluation, going back to um, our data and our mission statement. So now we're held to Perkins 5. Um, the AOE is still developing the statewide plan, which then they have to go to open meeting and public comments. Um, so we don't have all the information yet, but my, be my best guess is these are the main items. We know math and literacy, science in 2021. 20, um, IRC attainment will be one of them. We earned over 400 last year, so we did a great job. Um, dual enrollment, we were a little bit down. I think we wanted to be at 25% and we were at 23%. And my reasoning for that is the health careers program didn't do dual enrollment last year. So mm -hmm. that would have been our 2%. Um, Work-based learning, we had a, over 103 guest speakers, 56 students participated in work-based learning, 18 job shadows, 71 total placements. So I feel good about everything else. Um, and just, it's always good to grow too, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not stopping these, these are our focal points. And then this is how we spend Perkins. So, uh, this year we have $137,000, um, nine, roughly 9,000 goes to um, the consortium so that we help pay for the teacher prep program mm -hmm. as well as the statewide CTSO. Um, this is the money we spend for our math teacher, which goes towards the math portion of Perkins. Um, and we're, we love Tennedy. She was our UVM teacher of the year. She's an awesome teacher. Um, she's teaching the EMC squared math that piece I promoted and, and has, I think, 10, 11 students and it's going great so far. Um, what else? Language arts support in our academic center. Uh, we have $22,000 for equipment this year. The $23,000 helps us pay for the um, Mark Perna who came and that was $16,000. And then we do a challenge day with Vermont Works for Women um, and that's $7,500. And this year, though, we're targeting middle school girls rather than ninth and 10th grade, mm -hmm. okay, to try and also meet the AOE's request to push outreach further in the middle school. So that's where we're going to start. Um, and then industry RCs, uh, we have 25,000. Mm -hmm. So, all right, and then this is kind of out of the data range, um, going back to the agenda, but enrollment, and this is our current enrollment as of last Thursday. One Lamoille is not really unusual for us. That's pretty far, so that's good yeah. for us. Um, Northfield's a little low, and really it's low from last year. Mm. Um, Randolph, we had a large senior class depart in Randolph. Um, we had five U32 students slated, and three did not come at all, did not mm. even attend on the first day. Um, so this is where we are, about 131. Um, five total students didn't show on the first day and one who was here last year went back to Williamstown last week. Mm. And then um, one student told me he's moving to Florida in two weeks. Can't yeah, stop that's that. quite a bit. I thought we were way up like 140 something. Well, but also remember we have zero in the business program and the ER, the forestry yeah. program moved to moved. ag. Right. You know, so for last year we had 13 programs and this year we have 11. Even if there were eight, that would get right. us in each closer to the 140. Yep. And working on the pre tech for this year, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, the, and we can use the pre tech numbers in our count, mm -hmm. which will help a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's more for state reporting. I think that is it. Yeah. So that's my longitudinal data report. Thank you. All right. So uh, the new program is the advanced manufacturing, right? We're in our second year. Right, yes. second year. And so how is it uh, going? How does it look projecting for this school year and for next? Great. I think, is it full, um, uh, enrollment I think we have 11 or 12. All right. Um, wait, yeah, see. it says 11. 11, right? Okay. Yep. Um, which is really good as a second year program, considering mm -hmm. where we are. Um, we have one returning, two returning students into that program. Mm -hmm. Two returning from two last returning. year. From last year. And the rest are all new. The rest are all new. It is, yeah. All right. Um, and so we're excited about that. And that money, remember we had grant money to start the program, and then we had another a second grant for $59,000 last year to continue to build it for, for this year. Did you get the plasma cutter running yet? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> it's like it's some neat, to neat toys. Yeah. With some of these programs, I, I see that it's trending down. Um, my 
the the Any one concerns. Yeah, I'm concerned about our graphic arts program. We have four students um, in it right now. And that usually usually pretty it? full, and that's also from um, three of the U32 students were in that program, mm. so mm -hmm. that that took a, just a big hit. And then one student transferred already from there to another program. Mm. Um, so that that's my biggest worry right now. Is there any way you know? I know it's the beginning of school and everything's already started, mm -hmm. but is there any way when things are down like that to go back to your sending schools and say, did anyone? Yeah, we actually had a, a visitor summer? today from Williamstown who visited digital film and, mm -hmm. and graphic arts. Okay. So, and my hope also is is the career trees will really give us mm -hmm. a different kind of message. Okay. Yeah. So we, we like to see that Rutland uh, Stafford Technical Center in Rutland, they also participate mm -hmm. in this and they said they're at maximum capacity now mm -hmm. that they've started to use this program mm. so, that's good yeah so seeing as you're down to 11 programs is that something that you're looking to add a, a different another program in the years to come or is that still sort of under well i, I think the tricky uh, thing is timing mm -hmm. right so in the forestry program room where we had the forestry program we put pre-tech in there right now and i, I don't want to I, I feel like if I move them again, I can, but I'd also like to have some continuity in, in space there. And, and that room works well for them because of the size. It's one of our smallest rooms. Um, at the same time, I would like to at least get up to one more program next year. And the question is really where do we put that? Um, if we're not running business next year, based upon that we had no students this year, and I don't know if we can really rally around that again. We have no students. We have no students. That gives us a space. Um, but that also then means there's only certain programs that can go in that space because of where it is and how it's connected to the rest of the building. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of a classroom space mm -hmm. than I would say a shop space. Mm -hmm. um, I think our the state's focus and the governor's focus on cybersecurity, which we put into our criminal justice program, mm -hmm. healthcare, transportation, you know, we already have some of those. I think we could support a second health careers program and do something completely different, but I also worry a little bit about is there a continuous flow for that? Could I get 16 every time? Could I get 32 every single time? And we might. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the questions I think we really need to ask students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not only what would you sign up for, but what are we missing? I think right. electrical has been talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'd, ra I'd rather do electrical than HVAC. I feel like mm -hmm. there's a little more cell on electrical mm -hmm. than HVAC. Mm -hmm. But again, you would need a certain kind of classroom for right. electrical. It wouldn't fit where business is right now from just a facility standpoint. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't see anyone moving. Like, but maybe a cybersecurity might. Well, I think that's already in our criminal okay. justice program. We, mm -hmm. um, for the past two years, Mr. Lacey's already taught some of that. Right. We've done the Girls Coast Cyber. Um, the other grant we got last May has specifically to help implement that. And so we're working with VT VLC right now to do an introduction to cybersecurity course with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we bought another software and curriculum called NCASE, um, which is a, a cybersecurity program. And we got extra computers through this grant as well. So I feel like that one's already in there. To do a standalone wouldn't, wouldn't be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Will you be looking at sort of what employers are saying they need? Right, and so... Education that's not quite a college... Well, degree, right. And so the governor's talking construction trades, which mm -hmm. we have. Right. But yeah, I do yeah. think electrical might be, it's, it's different. It is. Right? Um, cybersecurity, mm -hmm. healthcare, transportation, and ag. That's what the governor's Isn't focusing it, when on. When they say transportation, is it the It's the auto, big, I think it's the big umbrella. Yeah. And Nothing uh, in computers. Is computers? I mean, they do, they want advanced manufacturing, and they call computers cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. My biggest fear with that, though, as a K through 12, district we don't do a lot of computer technology right. k through 10 and so for me to implement something after right. that there needs to be some education before that for students right. to get excited about otherwise i don't think it would work yeah and it it, it petered out right um, it seems like when you look at employment a lot of stuff that has to do with computers but there's also a lot of health care right. mm -hmm. um, and we can touch on much like, I feel like we can touch on computers across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, so a, a student might take advanced manufacturing and get a lot of computer work, and maybe they do criminal justice and still get a lot of computer work. Right. 
you know, it, it, it touches across many different fields. It's not just a Cisco program kind of thing. Right, right. And I think with the apps and the programs being so much more user friendly, all the, you know, people are learning just the, what they're doing and not right. necessarily how to get to it. Right. So, That's true. You know. and, and what's hard about computers is, you know, if because we work on, on a slow pace education in some respect, that slower timeline, mm -hmm. for us to invest in something today and try to have three years of that technology, two years, two years yeah. it's already obsolete. Mm -hmm. And to try and keep up with that pace is really difficult. And expensive. Yes, yeah. right. And so how do we, whatever we want to bring in um, should be somewhat economically viable for us as well. Right. But we do know, you know, that uh, I was, you know, a few weeks ago, I was listening to the radio right before school started, and um, like on the point, uh, Central Vermont Medical Center, if you have an LNA, $5,000 signing bonus. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the hospitals in the area now are starting their own training programs to help people move up, which is fantastic, right? That's a debt saver, if you, mm -hmm. if you really think about it. So if we can get students to a, a particular point in either medical assisting, um, CCV starting some wonderful certificates um, that we might be able to do, a student might be able to do two years with us in health care, in health careers, two different fields, and then that would give them enough college credits to do one more year at CCV or Norwich. Or, yeah, so. that's, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, recruitment. A list of all the IRCs. The same work keys data is there. Um, Does anybody have any questions about the other information that's in here? I assume that was your complete director's report? Or, um, or I can go into more? the, I did not include anything, I don't think, from the director's report. Okay. Do you want to? Sure. So uh, Melissa Kill is our new health careers teacher. She's jumped right in, doing a fantastic job. Um, I think we are past all of last year, and, and she's just hitting it right on the head of the nail however we want to say it and she got that um, old people last year too which is yeah. good yeah, um, and so because she's come from Gifford she just has a tremendous amount of context as well mm -hmm. so she's going to have some students do some job shadows on the med surge unit mm -hmm. um, and radiology and, and some just fantastic things mm -hmm. and just so you also know last year when we left 10 out of the 12 had passed their LNA but then over the summer we got the other two to pass so we got 12 mm -hmm. out of 12 they just needed one more test like one more skills try yeah they were just nervous so is health careers just a one-year program it, it, now? Well, it's a, it, in a way, it always has been. You yeah. know, they get their LNA. That's the primary focus. Right. We have two students who have returned. One is taking um, anatomy and physiology online, and the other is starting to co-op. And we're going to still work with them to explore mm -hmm. what direction they want to go. Okay. Um, but it's primarily designed as a one-year. That's right. why a that's second why we, program we, would right. complement that. Right. And we wouldn't have to necessarily say, you have to do this one first or that one. You can really separate it out and say, you did this one, if you're still interested, you can do that one. Rather than making one higher level than the other. Um, Craig Fuller started our pre-tech program. So he's in the old forestry room. Um, he's working with seven RU students right now. Um, he's doing, I think it's period one, forgive me, I'm not fully sold on, on what their schedule is. And then he has period two as well. Okay, so five students in one period, I think that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then two students Tuesday, Thursday, and there's another day in there, right? Um, and then he does that with us half of the morning, and then he gets his contractual lunch, and then he goes to Williamstown, and he has a, two blocks with them from one to three. Mm -hmm. And so he has students, a group of students Monday and Thursday, the same group, and then a different group Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and what we've realized from this is that group at Williamstown, they're looking more for just an elective and extended learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we've scaled back a little bit. And here, students are looking for a course, a class. Mm -hmm. And so this will run for, both will run for a semester, and then we'll change over for second semester. Um, the goal is we're doing hands-on math and science STEM activities, hands-on. And then with that, students are connecting, what proficiency did I get out of this? What careers are available? Here's my list, and then if I'm interested in that career, let me help develop a plan. Mm -hmm. 
So what math might I need if I'm interested in becoming a civil engineer and how do I do that? Since they're mostly 8th, ninth, or 10th graders, they can start to actually track that out and see what they need to do. Um, so again, it kind of goes back to that Mark Perna thing, what lifestyle do I want and how do I get there? And so we've created like this workbook journal for them where they also are clicking on, um, if I'm interested in this career, what's that salary and range in education look like and how do I obtain it? And then we ask them to kind of pull it all together. We're only in our second week. We started September 4th. So we're building it slow, but I feel like it's the right direction to go. Um, we're hoping that Northfield will want to sign on also for second semester. Mm -hmm. so. It's open to 8th, 9th, and 10th grade. And you're mixing the... Right now, we don't have any 8th from RU. We only have 9th and 10th, but they're mixed because it's, it's easier for their schedules, right? right? right. Um, yeah. So it's pretty exciting. So far, good reports. Students look jazzed when they're leaving and they're excited to come down. So. That's good. Yeah. Um, we had new student orientation night on the, the day before, no, two days before school started. Um, that seems to be a continued success of just getting parents in the building as well. Uh, you know, most of the students by that time had been in a building at least three or four times on tours of different events, but it's really aimed at the parents as well. So they can see the school and meet the teacher, get the syllabus, have an understanding and, and see, oh, this is where my child is going to spend five hours a day. So mm -hmm. we like it. Um, we continue to do program support team. We had one today. Um, that's our math, English, program teacher, myself, guidance, work-based learning, and student services. Um, all meeting together to discuss students on academics, relationships, um, attendance, and, and see where they are, and technical skills. Um, so. Let's see, we, so far, pretty good at cell phone free, only during lunchtime. Seems pretty good. So far it's working. In my class. In works. your class. Mm -hmm. cool. There's some evidence. <laughs> are you doing that walk? Um, again, uh, most of the programs or? are. I'd say, um, <laughs> I have it in my bag over there, I'd say like maybe 8 out of 11. Um, the ones that aren't have the system that's working for them and that's already in place, so why rock that boat? Right. Um, and at lunchtime, do you see them suddenly pulling them out and spending a lot of time with them? Or? You know, it's interesting. Our lunchtime changed this year, so we're at 11.30 to 11.55, and everyone thinks it's too long, which is fascinating to me. <laughs> I, I know, but, and it's only by, by three minutes. <laughs> like, it's three minutes more than over. Um, the, there are some students that are still fully engaged. Like, they're, yeah. that's what they're doing. But for the most part, I'd say it's a balance. I'd say it's a balance. Some of them are just looking at stuff together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some videos are laughing, but have, they're still social. Um, I think it'd be really hard to police not having them yeah. at lunch. Yeah. I think, I think that'd be difficult. Um, but it's, it seems to be working. And it, it works better because we started on day one versus mm -hmm. the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. um, the middle school doesn't have that lunch time. I know. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They haven't got one complaint yet. No? Yeah. Well, that's because my son has high school lunch three days a week, so he can use So he is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> he had a Spanish so, class this year, so that screws his lunch up. So right. He's eating with the high school, so he can use his phone. Well. Yeah, so no one the middle schoolers complain, but maybe not the parents. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard of Pete. It's I haven't been, heard any students too. really yeah, complain, which, which I think is, I don't know, it's interesting. I think they knew it was coming. We put in the summer letters. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a great move it's, yeah. from a parent's point of view. I, I think from an employee point yeah. of view. Yeah. Um, I feel guilty. I stand in the hall sometimes checking my emails, and I feel guilty, which I think is yeah. good, right? That as adults, we can also be aware of, of what we're modeling. Mm -hmm. um, and when it's instated, do you, do you sort of talk about just the addictive nature of these devices that we have? Not yet. Or, or you, you know, South Burlington sure. had these amazing posters that they put up, and, and just saw it on Twitter, but of, you know, when you're using your phone, are you aware of you're either disrupting a class or not listening intently to someone? And, and there was one more message. And, and I thought it was a nice way to phrase it to the student to not, to, rather than just this kind of put your phone away right. kind of thing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, Which always works. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but, so uh, you know, because I think right now it's just accepted, I think we're okay. Mm -hmm. and, and what the hard part is, we also want them to use their phones properly mm -hmm. for their digital portfolio or for these other things. And so how do we balance that, mm -hmm. especially on field trips where, mm -hmm. where as a staff, we're just, we had this long discussion like, well, you go on a field trip, what do we do? Do we want them to listen to it on the bus? Because all these other pieces that are connected. 
Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's interesting. And well, it can be a great tool. It can be. That's well, the... But what we found last year, though, was the students who not necessarily were addicted the most, but who had the most reaction to their phone were getting messages that disturbed their day and they couldn't yeah. reset. Yeah. And we're seeing less of that right now already in seven days. Well, I think it's important because it opens a discussion about it. So often right. we just take it for granted. Oh, we can't take we can't take the phone away from the kid, right? right? But here, you know, it's engendering a discussion that's worthwhile about the value and the the, the problems that right. the, mm -hmm. these devices cause. So I I think that in and of itself is important. And also the value and to act, to get kids to actually think about in a career sense of being tethered to their phone for their job, right. what does that mean if you're stuck on your phone for work right. for an extended period of time? How does that affect the rest of your life? It, it's, it's fascinating. You know? you know, I thought parents would be more upset and I haven't received any. Well, that's, right? that's encouraging. Um, <laughs> I, I found, so my own kids go to Montpelier and, and they started the Yonder um, where the case. And so a few weeks ago when the Capitol shut down, the school shut down, I was like, oh, I should text my kid. And I was like, wait a second. You know, I had to take like, my own little step back and, and then also realize, hopefully their phone's put away. <laughs> so so it, was, it was a good check. Um, what else? We did purchase a new truck last year. I'm not sure if you knew that with surplus funds. Um, yeah, the one you showed me, the old one was just sad. Yeah, that, that thing had rusted. <laughs> that thing had been rusted. That's not... Hmm. Uh, Lane, did you have anything you want to share for this, for this um, time? Probably more on the facility side of things. So the, there's the green space that's out there now that the Raven building has been removed, yep. um, which is technically RTCC space. It might be worth certain discussion um, about you know how what the possible uses could be. Um, and that kind of connects into the other thing that was in the, the superintendent's report is um, we've got two buildings. We've got the, the shed here, the RES shed that yep. they use for storage, and you've got yours. It's adjacent to the new green space yep. there. Um, the problem was is that they didn't use the right fasteners um, on the metal roofs up there. Actually, I was actually surprised that they were actually driving the nails that they used through the metal roofs. Um, it's not usually how you do it. Um, but the, the freezing and thawing cycles have been causing the nails to lift out. Um, mm -hmm. So it's either, you know, we replace the roofs or decide to do something else with the building. Mm -hmm. And so that's a discussion for this year, um, maybe talking with folks. Um, this one, obviously, we're going to preserve. That one, you know, do we want to renovate it? Do we want to get rid of it? Right. Is it still useful? Um, part of it is, uh, you know, it'll be, be costly to replace the roof, which is fine. Um, but it's not, it's, it's a dirt ground on the inside so you know you're thinking about a storage space here dirt mm -hmm. ground and then it's barn board you know there's gaps between the boards it was built that way on purpose um, so how good it is at actually keeping things preserved I don't know um, so just kind of things to throw out there yeah. But, yeah. and where the do you remember where that climbing structure was a few years mm -hmm. ago so that that's been gone I think at least three years yeah. but we're starting work on a pavilion there so um, we're going to try and use the that's same the cement post there's some um, posts there that were gone, and use those posts and build um, a nice size for the, I mean, not too big, um, but that not only the school can use, but community when it's there, and hopefully Monday, maybe next year, we'll put a pizza, outside pizza. Yeah, that's, that's that flood plane. Well, it'll be the opposite end, um, so you know where the high tunnel is, it's closer to the high tunnel than on the river side, on the, on the driveway side. Yeah. And on the river so will it be up a little bit from that lower field, or are you going to be down in that lower field? No, we're field? still further up towards the parking lot. Toward, than, okay. than, yeah. Than, yeah. And that doesn't tend to flood right now, either. Right. It hasn't yet. Right, I'm trying to remember when I came through. Mm -hmm. I know the lower field got wiped out. A lot of water. Oh. And then with the high tunnel, we'll start our CSA again, and um, we have a permit for that high, for the uh, pavilion as well. So. We put a cement floor. As well. So they they weren't concerned. About it didn't seem like it. Yeah. I was distracted during my read by other roads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Those are the kind of highlights. Uh, Any highlights last. for financials you want to discuss? It's early. I mean, I, you know what? I'll, I mean, it's not directly related, but we got an extra 
122,000, right, for the free tech, uh, 61,000 for cybersecurity and the advanced manufacturing, um, and an extra 20,000 equipment. Is this great? Grant money? It was all grant money yeah. that I was able to get in the, from last, some of it started last year and this year. Oh. Uh, and that's on top of the 131, 137 for Perkins. And not too wow. much stuff that you have to track in order to I feel really it. bad for Robin because she <laughs> has to track it and they, and they keep um, changing that. But I try and give her really comprehensive information since she's so wonderful to work with and she's always on top of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it works. Yeah. She's excellent. Um, so it's not constraining you too No, no, I, I, I love doing that because I want the extra money. It, mm -hmm. it really allows us to do things that we might not be able to do. So. And he's in, the, in terms of the, the overall budget, we had talked a little bit last year about the tuition, how the tuition compensates when the, the numbers are down in terms of the enrollment. Mm -hmm. So the money that we get from the state um, to kind of help out, it comes from a rolling six-month uh, six semester average and um, we were looking at it today with Rob and um, out of the six semesters that are currently going into the average four of them were low so we're just hitting the new higher right. level from last year the 147 right. that we had um, but the the middle four were anywhere between 130 and 112 mm -hmm. um, and so we should 147 last year so we're down look at that you know mm -hmm. and I think still that higher 30, than well, looking back you know, over yeah I think what that adds to is a larger discussion of um, I don't know if we can support 13 programs anymore, right? right? You know, there's, right. there's one piece of saying, well, sure, we want 13 programs, right. but if they all have six or eight in them, that might, mm -hmm. right. might not be it. Right. Feasible. Financially right. viable, yeah. Right. And the pre-tech so. may have an impact, too, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. as the students are getting in and, and, and getting the feel early right. on in terms of what, what their choices are um, as they're going up through the grades. So. So, you know, as we get closer to recruitment time, there'll, there'll be some major decisions about next year in, in staffing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the business piece is interesting because that was going out everywhere. Um, I think we're one of the last ones that still... CC, CCDU still has a business. Essex has a part-time. But these those are also not in the tech centers. Those are in the high schools. High schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the majority of the business programs in the tech centers aren't last. Which is a shame because uh, yeah. you know, 12 credits of dual enrollment and mm -hmm. the fantastic work they do in the competitions. And yeah. I mean, they were doing some great things. Still. So, Robin, Robin said everything looks good in terms of the budget for you guys. Just got no, no concerns. So. Uh, the only thing on the uh, consent agenda is the minutes, which um, between Jason and Lane are the only three that were here. Um, I didn't see anything. Um, How that works? Can we still vote on that with with who we have? I'm not really a voting. I know you're not, and 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 neither are you. But can, uh, so my understanding of minutes is you're approving to enclose them in the um, officially in, 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 uh, accept them, and mm -hmm. not necessarily voting on what's in them. The content, right? The content, and yeah. so therefore, I'm guessing we can. You are the overseeing board. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. With that authority. Yeah. So I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes um, as written. So moved. And second. I'll second. All right. Uh, those in favor of accepting the minutes as written in, uh, in the enclosed document, um, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. And is there any correspondence or other items that you want to? Discuss that was not already discussed, Lane or or Jason. No. Okay. And do we need an executive session? No, okay. I don't. No. Okay. We ever have. <laughs> you just cursed this years, years ago. Yeah. Before. Yeah. All yeah. right. And Let's so then that. I'll adjourn the meeting at quarter. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you.